That brings us to this morning and the expanding presence of the Minnesota National Guard. We're joined now by Lieutenant Colonel Scott Rowetter with the Minnesota National Guard. Colonel, we're grateful to have you with us this morning. Can you please share with us um, a thousand more soldiers coming to protect the streets in Minneapolis and surrounding communities? What will your mission be? Well, good morning, Jennifer. Thank you for having me on. Uh, yes, we are uh, uh, in the process of expanding the number of forces that we have available uh, to support the state and, and our civilian partners uh, in this uh, in this event that's taking place. Um, we have uh, forces that were scheduled to conduct their uh, weekend drill activities and they were coming on to orders starting today and we're able to flex them down here to this area uh, and that'll bring our forces up to approximately 2,200 forces available to help support the agencies. Uh, we take our, our directions from the Malta Agency Coordination Center who is headed up by the Department of Public Safety and most requests will go through that agency and, and then they process those and they'll push those to the National Guard for support. And I can proudly say to date, we've, we've accomplished all of those missions that have been tasked to us. Uh, Lieutenant Rowiter, I, I, I'm not sure how you can say it was accomplished when we see what we saw last night. I, I, I'm looking at video right now of National Guard uh, vehicles and uh, soldiers uh, guarding areas in downtown Minneapolis while other parts of the city were burning. How, how was this happening overnight? that are given to us from the multi-coordination uh, multi-agency coordination center um so when those requests come in uh we proudly support those those agencies such as like the fire department and those missions uh where they they uh, go out to fight those fires and we provide the scene control for them um you know we can uh participate with those agencies that we are allowed to uh or asked to help support and those are the ones that i'm I'm, I'm speaking to when I say sure. we probably accomplished those missions. So who's in charge? Who's making the decisions? Who's telling you where to go or what to do? We Again, we receive the mission through the uh, multi-agency coordination center. So the Department of Public Safety is in charge. They are the incident commander. And uh, when the requests come in, they're vetted through those staff and eventually approved by that incident commander. And at that time, we are provided that, that mission statement, task, and purpose. And we move out to execute those missions. What were soldiers met with overnight? Was there resistance? Um, and what did they face in their missions overnight? Well, as they responded, uh, some of our forces uh, did not receive much uh, resistance. Others uh, did receive some, uh, you know, verbal communications from from some of the uh, civilians out there on the uh, in the environment. Um, there were some some instances where uh, you know there was some spray painting of uh, of some of our vehicles and egg throwing to the vehicles, but uh, um, we were able to de-escalate those in a, in a very good fashion and, and help accomplish the mission of our civilian partners. Lieutenant Colonel, how do we feel about tonight with the extra uh, soldiers being called in? Uh, how are you feeling about this plan uh, tonight? Well, tonight I feel very comfortable with the plan that's being developed. Uh, again, the, the request for our additional forces uh, is being met and we're able to provide those and stage them where where the uh, the city and the state and the uh, multi-agency control our coordination center is asking us to be at um, so we're we're currently in the process of linking up with our uh, state patrol uh, minneapolis police department uh, partners uh, and we're we're currently preparing for those missions and i feel comfortable that we'll be able to support and help heal our city Lieutenant Colonel, just yesterday um, we were told that uh, there was not a lot of clear direction at the beginning of your mission when the National Guard was originally called in, that you were uh, not given directives. Um, has that changed now? Do you feel there is a clear picture of what your mission is and what the soldiers here are being asked to do to, to help restore order here in Minneapolis? I do. I feel like it's uh, becoming more and more clear each night that we provide this support. You know, obviously, as you continue to do operations like this, uh, the process tends to get better and better uh, as we start to learn. Uh, for a lot of us, this is something uh, new that we uh, haven't experienced this type of uh, vast, um, you know, uh, violence and, and civil unrest as, as we are seeing here. Um, so we're, we're continuing to work with our partners. We continue to develop process improvements. Uh, so that we can respond in a in a better and more clear fashion each night. We were seeing you overnight, the, that clear presence overnight. Um, throughout the daylight, what can people expect? As um, as now we are at you know eight twelve this morning, will we see your presence throughout the day today as well? 
You will. Uh, we still have forces that are that are out throughout the community, uh, supporting in in uh, security operations um, and presence patrol type operations. So you will see a National Guard presence out there. And uh, again, we're continuing to posture ourselves and and prepare ourselves for for anything that may come down the the, the pike for tonight uh, and in support of our city. 700 soldiers and airmen last night, an extra 1,000 tonight, largest domestic deployment in the Minnesota National Guard's 164-year history. Uh, Lieutenant Colonel, thanks for being with us on WCCO this morning. Good luck tonight. Thanks, sir.